Good afternoon, Scott. Hello, Deborah. <laughs> really happy to see you here once again. Uh, for people that don't know this gentleman, his name is Scott Mills, and he actually is going to be our interviewer today. Uh, we're having a seminar tomorrow, and it's for first responders, their families, and for clinicians. It's a partnership with Dalton Associates and uh, Invisible Wounds. And Scott, um, maybe you could explain to the audience why you've agreed to do this. I just think it's extremely important that the voices of families of uh, first responders, that me being police officers, firefighters, uh, paramedics, uh, military personnel, uh, that their voices are heard. Um, oftentimes uh, there are um, mental health challenges uh, and a lot of uh, stress that, that's going on um, for the, the actual first responder and uh, the, they come home and their family doesn't know why they're, uh, they're acting like that or why they're distant um, or why they're short with, with, uh, with different family members uh, or why they're just withdrawing. Right. And uh, so this is going to give some of the why. Um, and. Uh, it's just really important uh, for, for all family members to hear. So I'm happy to be here and thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Now the one thing that uh, I'm aware of is there's also some clinicians that are going to be here. Uh, and some of them work directly with first responders and others don't. So what do you think the things that they might actually learn uh, to enhance their skill set? Well, there is specific... Uh, um, stressors for the first responder community. Um, they experience uh, a significant amount more trauma in their workplace than most jobs. And uh, I think uh, they don't speak about it often. And uh, if you're a clinician and you're attending this, uh, this event here today, I think you're gonna hear some pretty raw stories about what it's really like mm -hmm. out there, uh, which will help you in your clinical practice to actually help first responders, because it's really important as a clinician to connect, um, find the right fit and be comfortable. And you need to know what questions to ask a lot of times. So you need the background to, uh, to ask the right questions. So it's, it's exciting that uh, there are a number of clinicians that are coming to the, uh, the event this weekend. Now the other thing is uh, just regarding family members, we do have some family members that are coming up and uh, th there might be some anxiety about that. Uh, do you see this as a way to kind of normalize some of the things that there's maybe going on in their households, within their family dynamics, that type of thing? Yeah, I think it's a very, it can be that. Um, I think the, the biggest takeaway for a family member will be that they're not alone. And uh, they will forge some type of a relationship or a connection with somebody here that they can reach out to, whether that be a professional person or maybe just a, another uh, family member and uh, that they're not on this journey alone. Um, because sometimes you can't talk about these issues with your intimate partner who's a first responder. Um, sometimes there's two first responders in the same house and that creates its own uh, special dynamic. And uh, I just think that uh, the family members will take away uh, some valuable insight tools and most of all, like I said, uh, they're not alone. Yeah. So one of the things that I've heard with family members is that because of being in relationships with first responders, sometimes there's this code of silence that's very difficult to break because of different fears that they might uh, have to face either with the, within the relationship or within the community where their partner might serve. Any comments about that? Um, for for sure, there's a there's a code of silence. Um, I know a number of people, uh, especially police officers that I know, um, they've never shared with their spouse what actually they've seen at work because they don't want to expose them to it, so they internalize it, and uh, it 
can take years uh, to, to overcome that, that code of silence. So uh, this weekend may be a, a bit of an icebreaker uh, for that code of silence so that uh, similar to the clinician, uh, a spouse of a first responder might know what question to ask and how to ask it because uh, even asking some of those tough questions can cause some anxiety and stress for everybody involved in the conversation. And I think maybe the last thing I'd like to touch on, which is a very significant topic, is the number of deaths by suicide um, or even line of duty deaths and how that impacts a family member. Uh, there's been a, a number, uh, you know, over the years and they seem to be increasing. Uh, any comments about that? I know it's very oh, delicate. So. Oh, it's, it's, it's a very uh, hard topic for anybody in the law enforcement community to talk about, especially in, in any community, because line of death duties occur in paramedics, in uh, fire, in, in police, uh, and in military, obviously, when, the, when uh, people die uh, serving their country. Mm -hmm. And um, the suicides are often, there's a stigma around it that there's some type of a shame involved. Uh, there's a whole entire movement uh, that's happening uh, as we speak uh, to recognize uh, that uh, um, these loved ones have died because of the line of duty. Um, and uh, for the ones that have died in the line of duty, um, they're, they're heroes. Um, they're always remembered as heroes. Um, the ones that died because of the line of duty, they've often done a lot of heroic uh, actions as well, and their suffering has taken them to drastic measures. So um, it, it's all about respect, it's about honor, and uh, it's about um, honoring the memory and the sacrifice of all those who served. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you because you are wearing the same shirt as I am, the same kind of flesh, uh, for the years and the commitment that you've shown with Invisible Wounds. You're a powerful man in the fact that your kindness is pervasive. <laughs> you have so many friends and followers uh, that I'm just very grateful for everything you do for us. Well, thank you, uh, Deborah. Thanks for continuing to make a difference out there. Oh, thank you.